Hello, and welcome to episode 43 of Sir Astro's Star Wars Painting Series. In this episode, we're going to paint Dengar from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Imperial Assault. Dengar has a somewhat limited colour palette and could be painted quite quickly, although his armour does have the potential for some interesting effects. Let's take a look at the painting stages. I've chosen to prime Dengar in black, followed with some Xenothal highlights sprayed from above. For the base colours, I'll be using some optional wet blending for the paler areas of the outfit, along with a semi-metallic coat for the dark plating. A simple black and brown shade can then be used to articulate the joins and details, whilst also doing a nice job of dulling down the metalwork. For the highlights, I'll be focusing mostly on the face and the armour, although the armour could be left as it is if you want to get Dengar finished quickly. We can then finish Dengar off by painting on the eyes as well as providing a scenic base. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm going to begin by painting the skin, and I've chosen to introduce some initial light and shade by using Bugman's Glow for the shadowed areas, which I'm then blending into some Cadian Flesh Tone for the highlights. I'm starting with the Bugman's Glow, and I'm marking out the main areas of shadow. Whilst that's still wet, I'm now applying the Cadian Flesh Tone to the remaining areas. We can then blend the tones with a damp brush, applying additional paint where necessary if the layer feels a little thin. For the grey sections of the outfit, I'm mixing roughly equal amounts of Celestra Grey and Carrick Stone. I'm also going to blend in some Mechanica Standard Grey for the more shadowed areas, although this could be considered optional. I'm also using this for the pale ties around the legs as well as the shoes. For the cream coloured sections of the outfit, I'm using Vallejo's Ivory, and I'll be using an equal mix of Steel Legion Drab and Mechanica's Standard Grey to darken the shadows. I'm starting with the Ivory, and I'm going to paint the headpiece first. and I'm now applying the shadow tone before blending the colours. Again, these darker tones may be considered optional, and a base coat of pure ivory would be fine for the tabletop. The blending doesn't have to be perfect, as the fabric is quite wrinkled, and the shade we'll be adding in a moment will also help tie things together. I'm now moving on to the other areas of the figure. Thank you. 
for the dark coloured armour, I'm using an equal mix of Warplock Bronze and Rhinox Hide. I'm now using a mix of lead belcher and black for the gun and the main body of the backpack. We can also use this for the pistol. Next I'm going to mix roughly equal measures of Steel Legion Drab and German Grey. And I'm using this for the various straps on the backpack, as well as the pouch. For the rolled up fabric, I'm using an equal mix of Rhinox Hide and XV88. I'm also using this for the gun stock. For the lighter silver parts of the backpack, I'm mixing Stormhost Silver with some Carrick Stone. And finally, I'm using some Mornifying Brown for the pistol holster. With the base colours complete, we're ready to add some shade. I'm now going to create a shade using equal parts of Agrax Earthshade, Nuln Oil and Lamian Medium. I'm then using this to shade the entire figure apart from the skin. For the skin, I'm using Reichland Flesh Shade. We 
With that done, we're ready to add some highlights. The two main areas I'd like to focus on here are the skin and the metallic armour. I'm starting with the skin and I'm using Cadian Flesh Tone for my first highlight. If the transition from the bass tone feels a little sharp, we can mix in a little Bogman's Glow to create an intermediary. Next I'm using Kisler Flesh for the brighter highlights. Here I'm honing in on the forehead, top of the nose, cheekbones and other raised details. For the brightest highlights I'm going to mix in a little white and some Nurgling Green in a few stages. A damp brush can be used to feather any harsh transitions. Here's my brightest tone. Here I'm reworking the scarring on the right side of the face. I'm going to finish the face off by glazing some thinned dark sea blue onto the chin area. This can be applied in one or two thin layers to create some tonal variation and a slightly stubbly appearance. Next I'm going to highlight the armour. You can see as I turn the miniature that the metallic element in the base colours already produces a dull shine, and there would be nothing wrong with leaving the armour as it is if you wish to save time. If you do want to provide your own highlights, here's one possible approach. I'm going to begin by taking the original base tone of Rhinoxide and Warplock Bronze, and I'm going to mix in a similar amount of XV88. I'm then going to block in my main areas of highlight, which you can see here marked out in red.
I'm then adding additional XV88 to strengthen the highlights. I'm now going to begin mixing in some ivory. This can be applied in a fairly rough manner to create a more noisy texture. I'm going to push these highlights quite far and we'll be making some fairly bold leaps to get there. Here I'm creating a darker glaze by mixing in a little of the original base tone and then using this to smooth out some of the transitions. I'm now repeating the process with some even brighter highlights. Once again I'm going fairly extreme with the stippled highlights, then toning things down with the darker glaze. Here I'm using pure ivory for the brightest highlights. You may find yourself going back and forth a few times with the highlights under glazes to achieve a look you're happy with. To create more visual interest, I'm now going to glaze some thinned dark sea blue into the shadows. and I'm pushing the highlights a little further still. Next I'm going to apply some thin layers of Secret Weapons Orange Rust, especially to the lower half of the figure. Thank you. 
This can be applied in multiple layers to achieve whatever level of rust you like. I'm applying just one or two thin layers to the top half, however, to help smooth the highlights out without destroying the contrast. Here I'm applying some additional dark sea blue into the shadows which plays nicely against the orange rust. And I'm now reapplying a few small specular highlights with pure ivory. I've also chosen to apply some red rust, mostly to the legs, to create an even richer tone. Now the most important areas are taken care of, we can quite quickly provide some simple highlights to the remaining areas, mostly using the original base colours. So I'm going to begin highlighting the cream areas using ivory, which I'm initially going to darken with a little steel legion drab and Mechanicus standard grey. and then brightening this with some additional ivory. And I'm now using pure ivory. For the grey areas, I'm using the original Celestra Grey and Carrick Stone mix. For all of the metallic areas, I'm mixing some Stormhurst Silver with Carrick Stone. I'm then using the original XV88 and Rhinoxide mix to highlight the roll on the backpack, as well as the gunstock.
This can be lightened with a little ivory. And finally, I'm mixing some Steel Legion Drap and German Grey to highlight the pouch. I'm also going to lighten this with some ivory and pick out the straps on the backpack. With the highlights complete, we're ready to add some finishing touches. I'm now going to paint the eyes with some ivory. Notice that I'm still using a size 2 rosemary and co brush, which may seem large, but I find it really helps avoid having the paint dry too quickly, which can be a problem with smaller brushes. And I'm now painting the pupils with some German grey. Here I'm reapplying some ivory beneath the right pupil. Next I've chosen to add some simple rust effects to the backpack using a mix of the orange and red rust colours. All that remains now is to protect the miniature with a matte spray. And I'm applying a scenic base as detailed in episode 10. And this completes Dengar. Thank you for watching, I hope you have enjoyed the video. Due to popular demand, you can find links to a selection of music composed for the series in the video description, for you to enjoy when painting or playing your favourite Star Wars themed games. My very special thanks as always go to the kind patrons who are funding this series. If you'd like to help support my work, you can do so by clicking the Patreon link. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!